Murder Drones is an amazing show, but with all the lore we get every episode, some fans have been a little confused by the exact progression of the plot, so I thought I'd take the time to talk about everything that has happened so far as we lead into the next episode, which is bound to be pretty huge. My name is Drone Cut, and let's break it all down. The series opened with a premise being explained by Uzi in front of her entire class, but this premise is something that would be contradicted later as the characters begin to unravel the truth. The history of Copper 9, as Uzi and her community believes it, is that the drones once worked for the humans on Copper 9, presumably mining copper that they'd send back to Earth. A horrible explosion caused by the humans would lead to their deaths, and the worker drones would survive. Without humans, they took over the human communities that existed for the human workers of Copper 9 and began to simulate their lives. Drones start as an untrained neural network that slowly develops the information they need to be a worker doing specific jobs over time, but the worker drones of Copper 9 wanted to simulate parenthood by giving these blank worker drone training networks half the programming from one drone and half from the other, allowing children like Uzi to have their own memories and ideas in life, but with a framework that comes from her father Khan and her mother Nori. Following this time of peace came the disassembly drones N, V, and G, who immediately started killing drones and drinking their oil. Khan had the idea to build three doors the disassembly drones could not get past, and for well over a decade now, the worker drones had their little society underground. Uzi, however, had grown tired of this and has created special weapons that she believes can fight back against the disassembly drones so they can take back the surface. Worker drones are pretty timid overall, especially Uzi's father, who we eventually learn lost Uzi's mother to a disassembly drone attack, seemingly before he built the three doors that currently protect them all. Uzi manages to sneak out and gets into a fight with a disassembly drone, who after some damage mistakes Uzi for a fellow disassembly drone. Uzi gets away from him, but once N realizes that Uzi was a worker drone, he goes after her and manages to get into the base, killing some of Khan's co-workers and friends. Khan abandoned Uzi, triggering sadness in N, who eventually decided to help her and to stop the other disassembly drones. Uzi believes that with the spaceship that the disassembly drones came in, that they can get back to Earth and fight against the humans, who everyone so far is assuming sent the disassembly drones. Jay even makes a lot of jokes about them working for J.C. Jensen, the company that created the drones. This episode also ended with Uzi blowing up Jay, after which Uzi herself experiences some strange glitch, which seems to activate her absolute solver. This absolute solver is a base AI that was also found in Jay and was activated when Uzi damaged her with her gun. When it activated in Jay, it appeared to activate in Uzi too, though it's implied in episode 2 that she experienced the absolute solver even as an untrained neural network being held by her mother. This episode opened with a flashback to N's time on Earth, where we learned that he, Jay, and V were all servants in a mansion for humans who found them to be pretty creepy. These drones in particular were found by the daughter of the house Tessa, who would scavenge for worker drones in the dumps that she could salvage. Here we saw that V used to be very different from how she is portrayed in the present. In the past, she was a shy and timid drone, but after being turned to a disassembly drone, she started to act more like Jay, who we can see was already a bully in the past. After the story progresses, we are given a series of misleads that later get turned on their head, so every reveal is just setting up either a bigger reveal, or even a reveal that will undo the last reveal's implications. Following the strange flashback at the mansion and Uzi noticing the strange absolute solver symbol on her eye, V indicates that the story Uzi gave at the beginning of episode 1 may not be true, and that the drones of Copper 9 may not be innocent in what happened to the humans there. The episode followed Uzi and N as they discover the Absolute Solver using Jay's remains to try and reconstruct her, creating some sort of horrible monster in the meantime. Using holograms, the Absolute Solver would project videos of drones to lure the other drones in and disassemble them for parts. The episode seemed to end with Uzi and N destroying the Absolute Solver, but of course we now know that Jay was fully reconstructed. In this episode, we also explored the story of Doll, who told us that her parents were killed in front of her by the disassembly drones. We also know that she has the Absolute Solver, giving her strange powers, hinting at where Uzi will go when her powers begin to develop. The third episode brought Doll into the spotlight, with an episode focusing on the prom in the worker drone bunker. Doll has been killing her classmates, it's shown, indicating that she, like the disassembly drones, needs oil to stay cool when using her Absolute Solver. The last episode ended with Uzi being scared of N because of the Absolute Solver, so she was trying to get into her regular school life afterward. Her dad unfortunately forces her to go to prom with some of her classmates, Lizzie and Doll, with him chaperoning. 
V, meanwhile, is trying to convince N to try and go to prom in order to kill everyone. N doesn't want to do that anymore, even with Uzi being scared of him and pushing him away, and he is very worried about what they really are and why they were sent on this mission. Here, V indicates that she knows a lot more than she lets on, and with what she knows, she thinks it's best for her and N to just not pry into it, to just try and get by on killing as few bots as they need to survive. N refuses to stop prying, however, and V escapes, revealing that she was never really chained down and goes off to murder people at the prom. N thus goes after her to try and stop her, meeting up with Uzi along the way and patching things up from the previous episode. Doll has been killing her classmates to survive up until this point, but uses V showing up to the prom as a chance to attack her instead. With Doll's parents being killed by disassembly drones, there are only really three people who could have done it, and this episode made it clear that Doll knew it was V and had been biding her time until she could get her revenge on her. This battle was interrupted by Uzi, who manages to stop the fight for a while, with Doll getting away. After this, they explore Doll's apartment, where they are attacked by her again, but this time she sees Uzi's absolute solver and suddenly feels very sad for her, indicating that the version Uzi has is far more horrifying than Doll's. Doll ends up leaving, forgetting her revenge mission and instead promising that if she finds what she's looking for, she'll use it to help not just herself, but also Uzi. This set up perfectly the next episode of Murder Drones, where we see Uzi's horrifying transformation. Episode 4 had the gang going on a camping trip up to a campsite that Uzi's mother used to work at before the explosion that killed all the humans there. In the previous episode, Doll had left behind a skull bracelet similar to the one Uzi got from her own mother. This campsite is a disassembly camp where drones were terminated when they were found no longer to be of use to Copper 9. While here, Uzi begins to go through her horrifying transformation into a murderous fallen angel drone. This appears to be what Doll was worried about, with Doll not having this transformation herself. All over the campsite, Uzi finds mysterious scribbles from her mother, similar to the ones that Khan was hiding inside of their home, all showing eldritch abominations like the Absolute Solver builds herself into. Here, N finds the zombie drones tape, which says on it not to let robots watch. This gives N strange flashes of memory, showing the drone that Tessa brought into the mansion back in the episode 2 flashback, who we now know to be named Sin, spelled C-Y-N. This tape is a training tape for JC Jensen drone technicians that we will later learn is not about the transformation that Uzi is going through into some sort of weird zombie monster, but is actually just about how to disassemble drones properly so that the absolute solver doesn't take them over. Here, we can see that the Absolute Solver has the power to create strange, eldritch monster lifeforms like the ones that Uzi's mother Nori was drawing by superheating objects that are coming towards the user. At the end of the episode, Uzi is calmed down and able to control herself after going through a horrible transformation and eating some of her classmates, reversing her transformation back to a seemingly regular drone, but leaving her still susceptible to heat as we see, indicating that she will need to feast on more oil soon in order to survive. The fifth and most recent episode opened with us in the middle of a brand new plot. Back in episode 2, when Uzi's teacher is having a conference with her father, we see flashes of her doing funny stuff, including hacking the consciousness of one of her classmates to control him. In this episode, we are presented as being in a flashback that N is experiencing, but is actually a digital reconstruction of some of the deleted memories he has combined with some of the deleted memories of V. Uzi thus is able to insert herself into the memories the same way she could override and insert herself into her classmate. Here, we learn a lot about what happened on Earth with N and the other disassembly drones. The episode first opened with a few clips from the zombie drones training tape, which explained that the Absolute Solver was not a purposeful backup program given to the disassembly drones by humans, but is the base artificial intelligence that various technologies on Earth use. It would be a raw and powerful AI, but would be more useful when an operating system is put on top of it that not just limits its intelligence, but gives it goals to work towards, such as the worker drone operating system mentioned in the video. When not properly disposed of, worker drones can reboot, and sometimes they reboot without their worker drone OS. This creates a zombie drone, which wanders around without any intent to help or work the way a worker drone would naturally have with its OS. This base AI is so intelligent and without rules from an operating system that it only knows how to grow its own intelligence and figure out its limits and how to work around them. 
This would mean exploiting the natural intended purposes of its machinery to do more and more sophisticated things. I believe a lot of this comes down to the absolute solver being able to hyper-vibrate some of its machinery to exploit the laws of physics, making what appears to be magical powers. This explains how it can even hyper-heat up an object coming at Uzi in the previous episode and explode it into a living life form of some sort. These zombie drones seem harmless at first, just wandering around without much understanding, but can become dangerous as without an operating system, they don't have an inherent drive to help humans, as we've said. Sin appears to be a worker drone with the absolute solver in complete control, and despite acting weird, has convinced the humans that she is still a worker drone operating system, even if a bit faulty. For her inability to understand her various duties, Sin is chained up in the basement. This punishment is used by Sin as a time to work on her Frankenstein droid bots and to reshape herself into the image she prefers. In this episode, Tessa is implied to be chained up as well as we see her rubbing her wrist and insisting that she is fine to Jay. Sin has reached a point where she's ready to fight back against the humans and ends up massacring Tessa's family and all of the guests at the gala. This family appears to run J.C. Jensen, and thus most of the guests would be people involved with the business, leaving Sin with the infrastructure of the business to take control of. From here, she kept Tessa alive to help work with the disassembly drones. While we don't know precisely what happened next, it seemed that the Absolute Solver reached out to Copper 9 and convinced drones there to cause the Copper 9 explosion, before sending her disassembly drones to kill the worker drones that remained on the exoplanet. This, I imagine, will leave a pile of body parts for the Absolute Solver to construct the ultimate version of itself with, and create a plan for her goals of solving the Absolute Fabric, the Void, the Exponential End, as she calls it at the end of the episode. This appears to be the singularity event that Uzi's mother Nori feared, indicating that when Nori was infected with the Absolute Solver, she also saw the Absolute Solver's plans for the future. This would explain why she knew the disassembly drones were coming, and why she was asking Khan to build three doors. It's likely that her death was what finally made him do it, knowing that next time it could be Uzi that dies. And thus, Nori seems to be the best candidate for who caused the Copper 9 explosion, but that's something I imagine we'll find out in the next episode. This episode ended with Uzi, V, and N getting the memories from their time on Earth back, and they immediately ran into Tessa and Jay, who have now teamed up with Dahl. Dahl had appeared earlier in the episode, demanding the strange bug that Uzi found at the Copper 9 camp. This bug appears to be a handheld computer that Uzi's mother used, but also a key to some elevator that presumably leads to an underground base that Tessa is trying to get to. There's been a lot of reason for these characters to fight, but I imagine the episode will end with them all teaming up, going to the camp, and learning what Nori's real hand in the explosion was. But what do you guys think? Let me know your theories in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.